this video, we are going to talk about behavioral economics and how behavioral economics can help us to address the climate crisis. Usually, economists assume that people behave rationally and optimize their utility. Behavioral economics uses standard economic models and changes the assumptions about behavior by having a closer look at social preferences, heuristics, and norms. Behavioral economists often use the concept of bounded or limited rationality. They think that it's important to include features of human behavior into economic models, which are usually not included. For example, that they are impatient or overconfident. Often, behavioral economists use laboratory experiments or experiments in the field to find out what people want and how they take decisions. And in that sense, behavioral economics is very close to psychology. Some interesting findings from behavioral experiments are that people tend to stick with the default option no matter what, people tend to overestimate the capabilities, and people tend to consider what is present in the actual moment way stronger than that will happen in the future, in a year, five, or 20 years. What can behavior economics contribute to the debate on climate change? How can it provide creative solutions and ideas? First of all, behavior economics has a lot to say about why, why we fail to act as individuals, organizations and world community, because it deals with things like disbelief, overconfidence and present bias. At the same time, understanding these psychological mechanisms can help us to understand how to design policies which are in line with how people think and act, and which are therefore more effective. One of the most successful ideas of behavior economics is the nudge. Nudges are closely linked to the idea of choice architectures. The way in which our environment is designed always makes some choices more likely than others. In many cases, because people stick to the default option and do what's most obvious. We can use this insight to trick ourselves and steer our, our behavior into certain directions without changing the set of options. In that way, we could build a world where people are most likely to take the climate-friendly option in all areas of life. People could be provided with renewable energy by default, be presented with a choice to buy isolated windows first, and get train tickets from their company if they don't ask for flight tickets explicitly. Now, behavioral economics also tells us that people don't act independently from each other, but are influenced by what others do and think of them, so social norms play a huge role. Changes in social norms can even be tipping points in society, where all out of a sudden big changes are possible. A very intriguing question is how changes in social norms can be triggered and accelerated by political decisions. Professor van der Wele, what do you think about this? Where I think behavioral economics comes in is that it can help, again, understanding the barriers to, to the psychological barriers and how to create political will, so how to get people, to give people information in a way that uh, makes it easier for them to understand how big the problem is, how to uh, simplify choices that um, create sustainable outcomes, etc. This raises a lot of interesting questions. Which role can education play? How should information be presented such that people take it into account instead of feeling opposed? What does a more effective framing look like? Does it help to show how urgent climate action is, or is it most important to develop positive visions? Professor Chen Li, who is Professor for Behavior Economics at Erasmus University Rotterdam, gave us some very interesting insights where behavior economics might be heading and which kind of research could further help to address the climate crisis. It is very important to protect people's intrinsic uh, motivation to care about the environment that they live in, and even without any financial cost, it's quite important that we care and therefore we do. Sometimes I do think that these financial incentives would crowd out people's in intrinsic incentives, thinking that I would have enough money to pay for the tax, so then I would actually having a bad, rather bad carbon footprint. It is really, really hard to make people bias-free. And I think we have provided a lot of understandings of why people are biased in certain ways, but we are very far away from coming up with effective ways of helping people uh, overcome those biases. 
In some cases, behavior economics can help us to find answers on how to overcome biases. For example, to care more about a future that's uncertain, sometimes seems far away and affects future generations more than, affect, than it affects us. On the other hand, behavior economics shows that not every deviation from the rational agent is a bias, and that things like reciprocity between people deserve a lot more attention when we try to understand human beings.